Calvin, thanks for speaking to Talk Sport. Uh, love the new documentary. Just firstly, how did you find having the cameras following around you and your personal life? Um, yeah, it was quite strange at times. It was a little bit awkward as well. Um, but I think after a few weeks, uh, maybe a month or so, then you know I kind of got used to it, and you know the film crew was great with us as well. So they um understood, you know, if maybe if I was feeling tired or you know weren't really up to it. Um, they would always be like very easy going and come back another day and stuff like that. So it was, it was very nice. And the documentary explores your upbringing quite a lot. We meet quite a lot of your family, some brilliant characters in there. Um, but you were mostly raised by your mum. Um, and there were some challenging moments in your upbringing. What What would you say were you, were your most challenging moments? Um, probably. Obviously, obviously not having the father figure there. Um, not seeing my father as much as, you know, what I would have liked to. Um, and, you know, maybe not understanding how my mum felt and, you know, what it meant to her and how hard she was working until I was a little bit older. That was, that was very challenging. And um, probably having to become, you know, the, the man of the house, so to say, and at such a young age and, you know, try to look after my brothers and sisters and be the role model for them. Um, and, um, and yeah, I'd probably just say that. And would you say that overcoming those challenges have helped you in terms of your football career as well? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, most definitely, you know, not having, you know, having them a mum like I, I have and, you know, it's pushed me on to want to kind of, you know, repay her for all the sacrifices she made and how hard, knowing how hard she's worked and and stuff like that. I've always wanted to, you know, do that one thing for one thing better than, and I kind of manifest things as well. So like when I say so that I'm gonna do something, I kind of, you know, just make sure that I go out my way to do that and um, you know, and achieve that. So, um, so yeah, I'd probably say yeah. There's a brilliant bit in the documentary where she's moved into your house. And she can't work the hob. Has she worked out how to use it yet? Yeah, she she has now. Um, to be honest, it's not even that difficult. You've literally got to press two buttons. But you know, my mum was just—I think she was just a little bit stressed out because she was trying to cook stuff, and you know, everybody was turning up to the house. So, oh, great stuff. Tell me about your early days at Leeds, because that also is a big part of this documentary. How often do you reflect on that time when you were breaking through? at your boyhood club, living the dream? Yeah, um, you know, I think about it all the time. I still speak to, you know, most of the lads because we had like four or five, you know, youth team players that I'd played with anyway and that made it a lot easier for me to settle into the team and kind of, you know, you know, integrate myself into the team because, you know, they was very easy going. It was very funny and, you know, we'd, we'd enjoyed a lot, of, a lot of years before that. So, um so, yeah, I think, you know, obviously it was difficult at times because there was a lot of changing managers. I think Leeds were changing managers every two months. So it seemed like at some point. Um, but then, obviously, you know, we got Bielsa came. He became, you know, a god, so to say, of Leeds. He, you know, everybody loves him and, you know, rightly so because he, he changed the footballing culture at Leeds and, you know, how we worked and, you know, how professional the club was and um, took us back to the Premier League. And Bielsa is someone who's credited with taking you personally as well to that next level. What are the main differences between working under Marcelo Bielsa and Pep Guardiola? Differences? Yeah, differences, yeah. I think the, the obviously the tactics are very different. Obviously, Bielsa is very man-to-man. -man. He was very onto his fitness all the time and, you know, a lot of running, a lot of um, distance covered during games and stuff, whereas Pep's teams are always going to have possession, well, most likely going to have more possession. So you won't have to do more running, you just have to be a lot smarter with the way you move the ball. And um, I think, you know, one of the main things was, you know, how I've understood the game over the last 12 months a lot more than what, 
you know, I ever thought possible and you know, I didn't think it was possible to understand the game a lot more. But um yeah, the way that Pep works, he's obviously a genius and you know, he wants perfection and um you know, it's a credit to him because you know, he's been at City for quite a while now and you know, for him to get that treble is amazing for him. It's funny hearing you say there that you've learned more about football than you'd even imagined because it sounds a lot like Jack Grealish at the end of uh, his first season as well. And there have been some comparisons about that. There's a comparison of, of that in the documentary as well. We hear from Jack Grealish. Do you agree with what Jack was saying, that you guys are very similar and that it has been quite a shared experience in terms of your first season at City? Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, I've known Jack for years. I've played against him for years and... Um, you know, he's a very much a family man as well, loves his family, keeps him very close. And um, he's obviously had these tough times, you know, when he was younger as well. So his career paths have taken basically the same step, but just a a year apart. And, um, you know, I kind of look at Jack and just think, you know, he's, you know, my inspiration in this part because, you know, he had a tough first year and, you know, so did I. And, you know, his second year came out flying. So, um so yeah, I'm looking forward obviously to getting pre season started and you know, hopefully I can I can turn things around. It was just such an unfortunate start for you, wasn't it, with that shoulder injury and how much do you think you would have been involved had that not happened? What were the plans for you uh during last season? I'm not too sure, to be honest. I had obviously gone into the season knowing that, you know, I'm gonna start every single game and play every game. But I kind of thought, you know, if I get the opportunity, then, you know, there might be a couple of games where, you know, I have a good little run and, you know, just to play more minutes and be involved a lot more. And, you know, when the injuries came, you know, the first injury came, I thought, oh, no, it's not too bad. It's only, you know, first time I dislocated my shoulder since, you know, before the Euros. So I thought, you know, it's not really going to happen again. And then two weeks later, it happened again. So then I was like, oh, God, here we go. So... Had to get the operation and um which to be fair, Pep was the one that, you know, he said to me, I think, you know, it's a good idea that you get this operation because, you know, even if, you know, you are fully fit for the World Cup, you might still go, you might not go, but then at least you're fully fit for when you come back and um, you know, I'm glad that I did make that decision because it's all just working fine now. As you move it up and down, yeah, it looks as if it <laughs> is. Um how have you coped mentally with having less game time this season? Um, it's been very difficult. It's been different as well. Um but it's been difficult because, you know, I'm used to I was at Leeds, I was used to playing every single game when I could. And um, you know, just to see, you know, a different the difference between, you know, playing every single game and then, you know, not being able to find your rhythm when you're not playing. Um you know, it's very hard and it taught me a lesson that, you know, you've got to always keep on your toes. You've got to always be fit, always make sure you're working hard enough to, because you never know when the right opportunity will come and when it does, then if you're not ready, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to be a struggle for you. So, um, so yeah, I'd probably say that. Uh, you mentioned the Euros before that. If we go back a bit to Euro 2020, when it came around and you were selected for the squad, how satisfying was it for you to prove any doubters wrong? Because at that time, it was Calvin Phillips from Leeds and you hadn't played much for England at all. But even in that first game, that standout performance, was it quite satisfying to prove some people wrong there? Yeah, I mean, it's always... I don't really listen to what people say anyway, but it's always nice to, you know, you know play well and, you know, shut shut a few people up when they speak bad about you so but um the funniest thing was I can remember a video it's I don't know where there was it was in it was in like a it was watching the game in like a park somewhere and there was three guys sat on a bench and then one guy goes Phillips Phillips is playing and then you know as a game's going on he's like but yeah Alice Phillips is good isn't he <laughs> like that but it was he was saying something bad at first and then you know, it instantly changed his mind because of how I was playing. So, you know, it's it's just how it is. It's how it, it's what you got to deal with as a footballer. You know, not many people know that, but um, 
but yeah, it's just how it is. We 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 can take it. It's nothing. It's nothing bad on our part. And playing in your first World Cup as well must have been a, a huge honour. Were you as involved as you'd like to be? And can you offer England, do you think, something different in midfield? Um, yeah, obviously, you know, to be involved in the World Cup, my first ever World Cup was amazing. Uh, the atmosphere was amazing. The weather was amazing. Um, had my family over there as well, which, you know, they really enjoyed it. So it was really special for me that. Um, and obviously... I just recovered from a shoulder injury, so, um, you know, I would have liked to have got more minutes, but you know, a lot of other players they've been fit all season and they played a lot of games, and you know, you can't really question the manager why he's not playing. Why am I not playing? Because, you know, you know the the other lads had been playing a lot more games. So, for me, it was just you know been good team player, been positive all the way through, and um, it was tough, but you know we. We did really well and, you know, I think if we would have beat France in that game, I think we would have gone on to win the, win the tournament. And, um, and yeah, um, yeah, that's probably... Yeah, uh, how confident do you think uh, England fans should be about the Euros next year, given what you've just said, that we maybe could have gone on to win the World Cup had we beaten France? Yeah, I think we can be very confident. As you can tell, we've got you know, some some amazing players and, you know, one player that stands out for me is obviously Jude Bellingham, who just moved to Real Madrid. He's an amazing player and um you know, he's gonna be he's gonna be a real superstar, I think, when he gets going at Real Madrid. Um and obviously for England as well. He's gonna be one of the star players and you know, I just hope everything goes well with him over in over in Spain and and hopefully we'll we'll see him soon and um and yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. What's he just quickly, what's he like to play alongside? It's just so easy. It's just so easy because you just have to give him a ball. You can give him a normal pass and he'll dribble five players and then create an opportunity and you know, we get we get a goal maybe or but he's he was so even even in the Euros he he was there, obviously he was very young, but you know, I can remember speaking to him and I can just remember saying to him, like, don't worry about it because, you know, your time is going to come. It's going to come when, you know, if you keep on working hard, you keep keep on, you know, doing the things that you're doing, there's no doubt that your time will come and, you know, the ty- the player that he is now is just incredible, so. Just finally, it's been a frustrating first season for you, of course, but also an amazing season for Manchester City. Just how proud are you of the achievements of the team and your personal achievements as well? Of being a treble winner, yeah, I think obviously it's been difficult, and you know I've struggled in some parts of the season, but you know I think you know for me, you know I've worked hard all the way throughout the season, and I think you know the rewards at the end kind of made it a lot more sweeter because um you know we did deserve it, and the way that the team performed over the full season was amazing, um, and yeah, obviously a treble winner. I never thought I'd say that in my lifetime and um I don't really know how we can better it, but you know, if we can in some way it'd be very, it'd be it'd be also another un- unreal achievement. So hopefully this next year we can do, you know, just as well.